can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you tell us something about yourself? Sir, my name is Shabam Singh. I belong to Raiburi district of Uttar Pradesh. And sir, I have completed my graduation, post graduation, mechanical engineering. Post that, sir, I have been selected in UPPSC, and currently, sir, I have been serving as deputy collector in district Gorakhpur. All right. Yes, sir. What are your interests? So my interest in the free time, I listen to podcasts, and sir, also in free time, I used to play games, computer games. Computer games, all right. Yes. So you belong to U to UP. Yes, sir. Well, tell me one thing that uh, UP has become very popular, very famous for its uh, bulldozer justice. Right. Uh, it's now been replicated all over the country by the various states. What precautions do you think that need to be put into law to make sure that? Uh, this is not used for discrimination and for any any form of unfairness. Sir, so first of all, we need to make sure that whatever actions based on bulldozer the government is taking has to be through process of law, due process of law must be followed. That proper uh, uh, intimation must be given to the owners. The uh, uh, proper order of magistrate must be issued. And sir, if the proper order is not being followed, then uh, if any such action has been committed, then proper inquiry must be done. So do you think a bureaucrat would be able to raise these issues if you are in the, in the service, say you are a subdivisional magistrate in Gorakhpur, and you were to be given such an order, what would you do? So I would definitely work according to the merits of the situation. And if there is any pressure, then I will first communicate the same to my senior bosses and take the suggestion from them. If the order is coming from the senior boss, obviously it has to come from the senior boss. Sir, I would stick to the merit of the situation. All right. Yes, sir. We have also been hearing of this concept of uh, process as punishment. What do you understand by this? Uh, pardon me, sir. Can you please repeat? We have been hearing of this concept of process as punishment. The process itself becomes a punishment. What is it? Sir, uh, as far as my limited knowledge, I can relate it to the judicial process of our country. And sir, uh, like delayed in the justice, uh, like uh, what I have experienced firsthand also, people have to run from uh, pole to pole to get the justice. And also sir, they have to get the paper paperwork done. Uh, they are not being clarified about the position about the judiciary or for the normal task. I think the delayed process is ultimately leads to punishment to them rather than getting justice. I think it this- relate, It also relates to the application of the bail laws. Okay, thank so, you sir. remains in bail for a very long period of time. It yes, is in justice. Thank you, sir. So this is a, something that is being talked about all over the country. But what is the what is the remedy, sir? Uh, regarding the delayed bails, uh, we can say that we must follow the honourable Supreme Court guideline that uh, uh, the charge sheet must be filed within uh, fixed sum of dates. I am not able to recall that uh, number of days. And sir, uh, the, the the whole process must become online so that the paperwork could be reduced and uh, the bail orders must be dispatched at the, right at that point of time. The overall time could be reduced. Recently, a decision has been taken by the UP government about uh, banning halal certification. Can you tell us something about this? Uh, yes, sir. Recently, there has been an order, and sir, uh, now this order has to uh, is stemming more from uh, the health purpose, health concerns of the uh, halal meat, uh, rather than uh, posting it as a uh, religious uh, religious uh, topic or aspect. Uh, sir, uh, so this much I can uh, recall. Does halal certification actually lead to bad quality things being sold in the market? Sir, uh, I wouldn't completely deny from the fact, sir. There has been uh, the cases of uh, selling the uh, unqualified or uh, non-tested food in the markets. But, sir, uh, steadily the awareness has been generated among the public. And so slowly the food and the inspection department is moving towards that direction that a full inspection must be done prior to selling such products in the markets. But if such conditions are applied in any state, why would the business people go to, to that state? They have to face these difficulties. I believe Sir, they have raids all over the state, in yes. various uh, CNFs, in various warehouses, malls. Uh, if people feel that if they go to a state and they might have to be subjected to these things, would not the economy of UP suffer? Sir, I believe it's more about standardization of the process. Sir, if uh, the entire process towards standardizing the food industry, then I would uh, I would think that it would it would uh, rather attract more big players in the market. If there is more, no that halal certification has nothing to do with uh, the, the standards of the, the prescribed by the state. Uh, 
by the by the by the nation. FSSAI approvals are already there. So right, sir, sir, I have to read it, read about more about it, sir. Uh, I would like to ask one more question. Recently, Mr. Krishnamurthy had uh, talked about uh, 70 hour working hours, 70 working hours for the young people of the country. What do you, how do you react to it? Sir, uh, first of all, giving due respect to the person, sir, it might be his own opinion, but uh, I believe, sir, uh, for doing any particular task, it boils down to person's own skills. Sir, uh, ultimately, we have to get our work done. We cannot just uh, fix the number of hours, like this number of hours you have to work. Ultimately, we should focus upon the end result. And sir, that can be achieved in uh, irrespective of the number of hours the person is working. So you feel that uh, this, this, this prescription is not actually useful? Uh, sir, uh, it can be useful for just a suggestion. For the suggestion purpose, we cannot have a blanket rule uh, of such kinds. All right, one more question. What are the major internal security problems that India faces today? Uh, sir, so the major internal security challenges, according to me, which India is facing is, first one is the drug trafficking and sir, cyber crime also. There has been recent cases of deep fake AI, the misuse of AI is there. And sir, also there are challenges from uh, cross-border, border issues. And so the pertinent question of left-wing extremism, extremism and nationalism is also there. Sir. Okay, fine. Ashok ji. Thank you, sir. 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 Comfortable you are? Yeah, yes, sir. You are deputy collector in UP? Yes, sir. Where are you serving and in what capacity? Sir, I am presently serving in Gorapur district. And sir, uh, presently I am holding the post of uh, OSD in Gorapur Development Authority. OSD? Yes, sir. Officer on a special duty. Where? In Gorakhpur Development Authority. Gorakhpur Development Authority. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's begin with UP. Sir. In the Bundelkhand part of UP, there is a demand for separation from UP. They want a separate state. Uh, yeah. Can you justify this demand? Sir, I disagree with it. Sir, I would rather say that uh, the opinions are welcome. We cannot suppress the opinion of rising demands. But sir, uh, my personal point of view is that rather than creating a separate state, we should better focus on improving the situation of those areas. Especially the demand is coming from the Bundelkhand Mudil, region or the eastern part of UP. We must rather focus on developing the infrastructure in those areas so that the demand... The question is not of we. It is question of those who live in Bundelkhand. A section of them do not want to remain in UP. So who will focus on their development? It is, it is the ultimate responsibility of the government. and the Government of the day. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, uh, you, your founder, uh, listen, uh, watching this motivational podcast. Yes, sir. What is a podcast? Sir, uh, podcast initially started as an audio blogging. It's an M it was an initially an audio of MP3 format, but later it started in a communication or conversational format where two persons or more than two persons used to sit over a mic and discuss about a particular issue or a life of a successful person. Sir, uh, this is audio or video? So it's both. So it accommodates both audio, audio and videos. Yes. Okay, so this motivational thing, how does this help you? You are a grown-up person. You must have already reached a certain level of maturity. So at this stage, how does the motivational thing help you? Motivational will help more in the school going children. They are in the in the early stages of their personality development. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, it is indeed true. But I believe, sir, uh, as a grown-up person or at any stage of life, we do need motivation. Sir, there are times when we feel low, when we feel challenged, or mm -hmm. just we, just we uh, require a different perspective of looking to the problem. I think, sir, okay. at that need some motivations. But as an elderly person, I see computer games wastage of time. I see children, you know, getting addicted to computer games, neglecting their studies, their co-curricular activities, even their outdoor life, getting hooked onto computer screen. So, and you have taken it as a hobby. Yes, sir. Sir, I have uh, taken it as a hobby and pursued it more during my college days. But now, right. sir, I hardly get any time to pursue it more. And sir, uh, playing computer games is yes, sir. It's a two, uh, it's a two-edged uh, sword. 
and okay. if you uh, follow it for a very long time it might you said it is a two edged sword it cuts both way yes sir hmm? so yes, now sir. tell me the positive side of it right sir sir uh, playing a computer game first of all uh, sir a strategic based game it develops our mind cognitive ability to uh, to uh, no develop a strategy to achieve a particular milestone secondly sir for while achieving a particular milestone we might fail at multiple levels it gives us the sense that uh, trying and trying we would ultimately achieve our goal and sir it also uh, accustoms us with the uh, with the foreign foreign world the games are being uh, framed on the foreign foreign platform or outside of our india so uh, sir these are the ways in which uh, the company oh, is this industry doing in india i i understand that's a big industry computer games industry how is it doing in india and do we have a indigenous component or it's all imported sir uh, uh, till the recent past most of the games have been uh, imported or the online gaming platform has been based on the foreign platforms but okay. now sir the government stand stands towards the online gaming industry is pro and sir government has uh, recently given uh, its uh, assurance towards the e sports industry in india and sir uh, the, in, the online gaming industry is growing at the 20% compound annual growth rate in india because of the huge population in india and also sir because of 20% cagr yes sir yes sir for since how many years sir for last 2 years sir it is growing at 20% okay CAGR. so it is yet to be tested yes sir so, and sir also sir the uh, honorable prime minister's stance is developing games for learning purposes and for devotional ah, that's good yes sir. that's good so now my last question sir uh, how does the dead trap diplomacy works through this uh, instrument of belt and road initiative sir so it's a, a pet project of uh, chinese government and sir uh, it's uh, uh, loading uh, loading its financial resources to the island nations small developing states so that uh, developing infrastructure in those countries through debt and sir ultimately these countries are failing to uh, failing to pay it back so that infrastructure is getting owned by the original uh, firm which is chinese based and giving it the strategic advan advantage i believe sir okay so, you are not from world of finance otherwise i would have taken you to next level thanks for interacting with me sir vijay sir you may like to thank you sir uh, shivam you know once upon a time uh, rai bareilly used to be prime madonna can you take me through last 50 years in uh, evolution or metamorphosis of raibrelli uh sir uh, the development of raibrelli has been like a sinus curve i would say sir uh, initially uh, when it was uh, uh, when it was under the uh, rule of uh, the gandhi family and sir uh, the mla was from the uh, communist party so there have been many uh, institution that that has been developed by the name of uh, gandhi family eminent personalities but sir lately the development has been skewed Okay, it has not been uh, up to the mark, sir. Infrastructure has not been up to the mark. The the maintenance of road traffic issue has been come up to the fore. But I believe, sir, uh, now the government of UP is focusing on the uh, overall development of the state, and I believe, sir, uh, the district will uh, definitely uh, develop once again. Okay, uh, you mentioned that you conducted elections as a returning officer for the yes. municipality. Yes. So. i presume you are well versed with the representation of people act and conduct of election rules sir i would say yes sir but i will definitely read it more sir okay right that is a good answer tell me four statutory duties of a returning officer statutory uh, sir uh, as far as my knowledge sir i would say the first one is preparation of electoral rules in the uh, constituency as a updation of uh, electoral roll through form 6 form 7 form 7b multiple forms are there sir is, second is, wait wait a minute wait a minute just think over is that the duty of returning officer or somebody else sir uh, the returning officer has to regulate all these activities in his constituency sir through the staff or the hands which the returning officer has so it is i am talking about statutory responsibilities so the nomination process coming to the my, to my mind sir okay yes, sir. nomination uh, the ro has to do uh, himself or herself okay second and, sir, uh, sir uh, the the counting of results declaration of results sir declaration of result i would say and returning okay. the result to the election commission that's why uh, he is called returning officer sir returning the result to the election commission sir. how about conduct of polling 
Uh, yes, sir. Sir, it's uh, one of the statutory uh, provisions, sir. Conduct of polling, sir, uh, and sir, giving uh, time to time information back to the election commission uh, on the given uh, forms. Okay. Now, have you heard of a thing called marking instrument relating to election? Uh, sorry, sir. Sir, I'm not going to. Okay, you are born in EVM era, so probably you may not be knowing. Mm, anyway, tell me two important changes which have taken place in elections in India over the last 30, 40, 50 years. Sir, uh, one major change is shifting from uh, ballot boxes to EVM. And sir, uh, and sir uh, within the EVM, for cross-checking, we have introduced the concept of EV bats. Uh, and sir, uh, for uh, uh, the, the the number of provisions under the model code of conduct has also been made more wide, including the uh, including the, uh, the digital media platforms also, sir. Sir, uh, these I can recall, sir. Okay. And what is your opinion about enforceability of model model code of conduct? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there has been recent debate about the uh, enforceability of model code of conduct since it's uh, a normal normal code of conduct, not enforceable in the court of law. But, sir, I believe uh, we should not legalize the model for the code of conduct because it will increase the dependency on judiciary. Rather, we should uh, come to a consensus where political parties consider more of model code of conduct as moral code of conduct, their moral responsibility towards conducting the uh, election in a more uh, prosperous and peaceful manner. Do you really think that in a statutory work, morality plays a role? Election is a statutory work. Like, uh, you know, uh, crime, dealing with crime is a statutory work. Do you really think morality has any role at all in these statutory uh, things? Uh, yes, sir. So we cannot deny it because morality is the basis for everything, every action. Sir, uh, either being a bureaucrat or a normal person, morality must form the basis of every action. Sir. Okay. Now, you are optionally anthropology. Yes. Sir. Coming to bioanthropology, can yes. you tell us something about the, uh, the origin and evolution of human species? Uh, sir, I can, uh, I can tell the sequence of uh, origin. Uh, that has been there. Sir, uh, uh, as far as I can recall, sir, it started from Dryopithecus, so then, sir, uh, followed by Ramapithecus, sir, uh, then Australopithecus, sir, Homo habilis, sir, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, sir, sir, as a Homo sapiens. Okay, excellent. The final question How does social anthropology help a person in administration? Uh, so it has a wide ranging benefits. Like as a bureaucrat, we face multiple situations. Like uh, there is a kiosk in a village or there is a demand from any village. Then the concept of village anthropology, village study can be used. And sir, if there is any tribal area in our uh, domain, we can use the concept of nature man spirit complex for rehabilitation purposes. And also sir, recommendation of Zaza committee can be done for their rehabilitation purposes. And also, sir, social anthropology deals with health metrics, population growth studies. These can be used. Okay, by the... okay, okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Kuller, you can start now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sh Shivam, how are you doing? All good, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, Shivam, uh, this was recent. Uh, we, we had certain controversy regarding the Lakshadweep. Yes. Right? And, uh, um, you know, somebody from the Maldives commented, and it has led to a uproar. Right. So can you uh, shed some light on it? Uh, sir, the recent uh, government of Maldives, uh, headed by the President Mohammed Muizu, and sir, he has a pro-Chinese stance, or you can say the India out stance. So this has been portrayed uh, by, a, by a couple of ministers from the Maldivian government, and uh, mm -hmm. saying that the Lakshadweep do not have the same standards of tourism that mm -hmm. Maldives can provide. I think mm -hmm. this caused the uproar, and sir, it uh, provided, provided India also an opportunity to develop its own areas for the tourism purposes rather than going outside. I think, sir, this was the case. Okay. What's an atoll? Sir, an atoll is a uh, type of a reef which is mm -hmm. developed around a, uh, around a uh, underwater volcano when it comes uh, over the surface. It develops around the volcano and once the volcano gets eroded, a ring of uh, reefs is formed. Sir, okay. that is 
right and uh, uh, does lakshadweep have atolls or fringing reefs so it uh, it has atolls it has atolls okay and what about maldives so maldives also has atolls okay right moving ahead uh, what do you think has caught the imagination of india in the last one year pardon me sir can you please repeat the questions so what do you think has caught the imagination of indians in the last one year so it might be the economic development which country is having okay so secondly is the uh, self awareness self consciousness which the indians have generated now that mm -hmm. we uh, we have a age old tradition age mm -hmm. old religion to uh, ponder upon to be uh, proud upon so i think sir this was something which was missing in the previous times mm -hmm. and sir also uh, the uh, the uh, promotion of uh, uh, local level industries and regional languages i think sir we have more uh, more started looking inwards uh, when it comes to development of india rather than just focusing on the outside source of things yeah. more right. towards agarvarta uh, being a student of anthropology uh, how do you see the impact of artificial intelligence uh, yes sir sir the artificial intelligence in the field of anthropology can be used in the field work techniques mm -hmm. as a dating techniques also like we have sir absolute dating technology we can use the ai technology for uh, more accurately predicting the dates of the fossil specimens mm -hmm. and sir uh, the ai can also be used in applied anthropology aspects like for designing of different equipments or sir gears for fisheries uh, or sir athletics also sir it can be used sir okay right now thank you sir uh, so anthropology why anthropology why not mechanical engineering why do you want to work as um, why did you take anthropology as an optional uh ma'am i would be honest that uh, the decision of anthropology was more strategic uh, because uh, the syllabus of anthropology is well defined we have a well uh, ring around the syllabus and ma'am the resources are also available readily so it uh, takes less time to prepare anthropology rather than completing mechanical revising it time by time okay now uh, how do you intend to use anthropology the knowledge of anthropology in your syllabus and let's not assume that it will be administration always you know you can get into any other service as well at that point of time how do you intend to use your knowledge in let's say efficiently managing your work ma'am i would rather say that uh, uh, while studying any subject or any degree we uh, we get value certain values so these values can be applied in whatever service or whatever field that like i get into for example uh, the values of uh, uh, some famous anthropologists like sc roy and sc dubey who worked tremendously towards the tribes so the underlying cause was empathy and compassion towards the tribes so this value can be used while working in any service so similarly there are many values which i have learned which can be used in any service or any course okay so your focus is on values okay now let's also talk about something theoretical now i am hoping you've heard about eb taylor yes ma'am Okay, so E. B. Taylor says that animism is the first stage of religion, right? Yes. Now he says that it will go through various stages. So I want you to tell me what is animism and what are the stages associated with it. Ma'am, uh, E. B. Taylor opined the concept of animism, and he said that it is the primitive man's belief in the soul. Mm -hmm. The worship of a soul is the collectively termed as animism, and he said that. Uh, a a family or a group of people having a, a particular person died in the previous years gen, uh, developing into a soul converting into a soul it will eventually lead to multiplication of souls and this led to the concept of uh, polytheism worshiping multiple uh, multiple gods or multiple souls and so ma'am this much i can recall uh, how about the next stage to polytheism can you recall it oh uh, sorry ma'am i have to read it Okay. Okay. Now, recently, this term "new animism" has been in news. Have you heard about it? New animism. Can you give me certain examples for the same? Ah, uh, sorry, ma'am. I'm not able to recall. Okay. Okay. So, since we're talking about religion, uh, I'm hoping that you've heard about the terms "little traditions" and "great traditions." So, uh, what are little traditions and great traditions, and how do they help in, let's say, uh, in the emergence of religion? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, the concept of little tradition deals with uh, a tradition which has been followed by minority few uh, in a small area. A certain people are worshiping something at a local level. That is called little tradition. 
and the great tradition is which has been followed by large number of people which has become more of a common thing in the society that is called great tradition and man there is all there is always a interaction between the tradition and great traditions uh, so how has this helped in the emergence of religion uh ma'am uh, the concept of little tradition when followed for a quite certain time a number of years then uh, eventually gets projected at the higher level in the society and it takes integrate form of the religion the religion starts forming the basis of that tradition okay okay uh, so your paper too is all about tribal cultures so yes, i just want to ask one simple question so it is often said that tribal uh, the emergence of tribal unrest is due to incompatibility between the tribals and nation state let me repeat the emergence of tribal unrest is due to incompatibility between tribes and nation state do you agree if yes uh, please quote some examples and if not quote some examples again uh, ma'am i would humbly disagree with the point mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, because india as a nation has been the home of tribes and there have been instances when uh, the government of the time of the present or the past has worked for the betterment of tribals along with the development so i would i won't think that uh, there is uh, some some sort of antithesis which is going on between the two rather it's a it's a interaction it's a coordination and there are bound to be certain frictions when there are coordinations and that 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 has been tackled well in the past and will be tackled well in the future okay okay uh now last but not the least recently ruby jubilee year of the uh, uh, of the thing narmada man was there i hope you're aware of it can you can you give me a brief idea about uh, the term narmada man uh yes ma'am ma'am uh, the discovery of narmada man in india was done by dr arun sonakia mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the discovery marked the presence of uh, india in the anthropological map of the world and okay. it was the first specimen which was properly uh, discovered and studied belong to the homo erectus genus mm -hmm. and uh, uh, i'm just much i can recall about their culture also there is something sir i have to read it okay now uh, regarding lakshadweep uh, issue right so recently there was this article which said lakshadweep is a, a melting pot of multiple cultures uh, have you read about it do you agree can you give uh, me i don't know certain points regarding the same Yes, ma'am. I have read a couple of articles regarding it, and uh, Lakshadweep has been the melting pot of uh, cultures because uh, the original inhabitants of the island are the migrants from the Malabar coast region of India, and there has uh, there has also been the wave of Arab uh, traders coming to that area. So there has been some melting culmination of cultures of different people. Uh, ma'am, this much I have read in the past. I think that will do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Rohit sir, uh, Deva, what do you feel about your interview? Sir, uh, sir, it was my first mock uh, for this uh, year, and sir, I believe I was a bit fast in my answer delivery. Sir, I have to be more cautious, more uh, cautious while listening the question. Sir, this much I can figure it out. Sir. Well, we feel, Shivam, that you are an excellent candidate, and if you have done it very, done well in your written examinations, you should sail through very easily. You are very confident. You are very articulate. And uh, we feel that uh, with this performance, you will be. It will be very easy for you to see. Thank Ashok. you, sir. Ashok Ji. Would you like to say something? Uh, when is your interview? Uh, sir, it's not in the first slot, and dates are not out for the second oh. slot. You have ample time. Right. Sir. Three areas where you should continue to focus. Your optionals and academic background. your depth and current affairs sir and the day you go to the interview that day morning also you should see what is latest in the news sir wahi ye mat karna ki kal ka dekha hai aaj ka paper dekhna bhul gaya definitely sir uh, and how you keep yourself abreast sir so we reading the newspaper hmm reading newspapers now ha which ones sir express hindu okay and for the latest that is happening sir uh, more or less it uh, uh, i get to know about it uh, through um, social media platform etc then i uh, go back google you it you can access um, uh, these news newspapers online also yes sir and there is a app 
Uh, I don't use it, but somebody recommended that this is one good app. You might try it in shorts. In shorts. So you can download it uh, from uh, this thing, Google Play Store, if you are using our app. It, it doesn't go in details. It gives you just one paragraph only, or less than a paragraph. Yes. So whatever is the latest, in one to two minutes, you will know what has happened in the past. Thanks. So is way that you will not go in detail, but you will not also miss out. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, it can be of your use. If you find it useful, stick to it. Otherwise, you can delete it, delete it from your phone. Okay. Yes. All the best, sir. You may like to add something. Uh Shivam, just one bit of advice. And uh, that is give a little pause between the question and the answer. Because otherwise, it gives a feeling that uh, you are over, uh, you are a overeaten person, and you are trying to vomit it out. So just, just this bit of advice from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Shivam, how comfortable are you at mechanical engineering? You've done your MTech, but just two, right? That's one. Not, not much, sir. Because okay. I have not revised it for past. Yeah, period. that's what I'm saying. So, uh, try to uh, prepare this part. Let's say they want to put you under pressure, right? Right. Despite the fact that it's been a decent amount of time that you, but you did a master's as well, right? Okay. So, you know, it is not something that you can say ki, you know, nahi aata at the end of the day, right? So, mechanical engineering part, at least a couple of subjects, right? Uh, comparison, right? EV versus the, you know, the past, right? Uh, the anthro AI answer, we can maybe make it better uh, by adding more dimensions to it. It was like a little one dimensional, right? Yes. We can talk about other aspects as well, right? Okay. Uh, what, how it will impact. Okay. Uh, so, and Rai Bareilly, this is one area I think we can, uh, the used to, your schooling is from Rai Bareilly, right? Yes. So, I, but I'm pretty sure in UP side, I think you would be well prepared. I'm not too worried about UP side. The only uh, thing is that if they want to put you under pressure of mechanical engineering is the place they'll go. Yes. Okay. So that's so prepare at least a certain level right there. Okay. Yes. Uh, absolutely good answers. I absolutely love the approach. Uh, my only recommendation would be that you go through all the, the those compilations which come for uh, anthropology option ke current affairs, because those will give you insights into, let's say, any specific scheme, right, or any specific initiative which is associated with the subject. So just go through them and mm -hmm. I think you'll be through. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. you know, just a couple of things that I would like to again mention. Your answer about halal left much to be desired. Huh. You have to read about halal. As far as I understand, the business of UP is extremely unhappy with this decision. So when you say that it actually will have no effect and people will come to crushing to UP, that's a question with questionable thing. Second, since you belong to UP, the board can actually test you on very controversial subjects like killing. We can counter. You have got to be careful that you prepare yourself very well. You should not uh, look as if you are praising the government all the time. You should be neutral. You've got to see that you restrict to the constitutional values. That is absolutely important. You are a bureaucrat and therefore you are supposed to be wedded only to the constitution and nothing else. And similarly, when I asked you about the process as punishment, you talked only about delays. There are many laws which, can, which are so tough and so difficult, like the PMLA. It can actually make a person's life hell. You can be arrested. I can be arrested anytime. Yes, sir. Years before we would be able, we would be let off by the court. So okay. there are many laws where the process itself is like punishment. So you have got to have a more nuanced answer to this question. Right? Huh? Yes, sir. Yogi, you still want to say something? Uh, when it comes to law, you don't need to be politically correct. Yes. Within court and court, you should show passion for rule of law and due procedure of law. Due procedure of law has to be honored. Yes, sir. यहाँ पर आपका stance एकदम clear होना है, ठीक है? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anything else, the Shivam, that you would like to ask us? So the suggestions has been uh, uh, quite a few, sir. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, sir, regarding my uh, past two years of experience as a deputy collector, sir, what would the major area of the question that could be asked? Like, it will be about Gorakhpur. It will be asking you, like, how uh, has your knowledge of engineering helped you discharging your responsibilities? So you will be basically asked about your role as a subdivisional magistrate, and especially, as Mr. Verma has pointed out, how are you implementing the law? Gorakhpur is a difficult area. It has been known for its uh, lawlessness in the past. Now, of course, it is all under control. But I was CDO of uh, Gorakhpur way back when the when the, those champions like Harishan Kartiwari and uh, others. Yes. So, Sahi and uh, <laughs> living there, in very happy times comparatively. But it is a very controversial area. So, people, yes. if there's anybody from is a tough area. It, if there's anybody from UP in the board. He can ask you this question. Uh, Shivam, when it comes to your optional or your academic background, that has been tested. But anything, if a question has to come, it will come from the domain of general awareness. Like I am not a mechanical engineer, and if I want to put a question to you on mechanical engineering, I will put something which is in the domain of general awareness. Yes. So you sensitize yourself and gear yourself to cover things which are in general awareness. Hmm? Or, yes, or which, are, which are matter of common and ordinary knowledge. Yes, sir. technical mechanical engineering So it is unlikely that there would be a mechanical engineer in the board. There may be, but it is not necessary. Yes, sir. But, all those who are in the board are educated and experienced. And with the passage of time, we learned many things which are not related to our education. But those will come from the general awareness domain. Yes, sir. Hmm? metro ke baat aage to driverless metro. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. More applied parts. So is there any change of Puchi Jasakti? Technical change of any ko jaga, so you don't need to revise your textbook. Sir. Thank you, Shivam. But say cheese last talk of Tanata. I think that you are a candidate who should sail through. According to us, I think so. If you have done well in your written examination, there should be no difficulty in getting through. And it'll be easier for you to handle it. Yes, Secondly, if their views are on the net about anything which is controversial or anything that the government has done or done now, doing now or done in the past, read that as well. It will help yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that you are the very fine candidates. Our best wishes are with you. Okay. Okay, Shivam, all the best. Thank you are a good candidate. Keep your morale high. Thank you. Thank you.